I'm here in my office. I just caked up some yarn to finish off my Hansel half. I'm on the border now. I'm watching the Hugh Loco vlog of all the shows that she's been to. And I just went on to Amazon to purchase some storage containers. Oops. I like to keep um, yarn in these kind of heavy duty storage containers with like the lock, the locking things. I really like those. And I was looking through all the pictures, right? Gives you all the different views of the product. Look at the last one. Amazon knows what's up. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. There's even like a, a work in progress on here. So, yeah, I think that's the one I'm getting. I've got my Guthrie pattern printed out and I'm just waiting on the yarn so that I can start swatching. So for the past couple of days, I have been working on my Granny Stripe crochet blanket. I got to the point on my Hansel hap where I uh, was done with the border and then I needed to start the edging or the other way around. I'm not sure which is called which, but um, the edging or the last part that I need to do, I have to switch back to the undyed yarn that I used for the center, blo center block. and. Um, I have to wind a new skein of yarn to do that. So I hadn't done it yet, I just did it now. But um, in the meantime, I didn't feel like working on those socks where I have to rip out the toe. And I didn't wanna work on any of my old loops either. So I got out my granny stripe crochet blanket. And this is a project I haven't worked on in a little while. It's a really great comfort project for me. It's like mindless to the core. And I'm not a crocheter, but this stitch and this blanket, I can do it so fast and it's so simple and it's just so satisfying to do something kind of different with my hands. When I was um, in the first trimester of my pregnancy, my knitting mojo really took a deep dive and I just couldn't, I didn't have the energy really to work on anything. I was so tired and I just didn't want to work on any knitting. This is like the only thing I worked on almost the whole first trimester of my pregnancy. So I pulled it out again now, and it has been so fun. I've gotten, since a couple days ago, I've gotten probably four or five of those rows. And I've really, really been enjoying it. I've got all of the yarns, excuse me, that I kind of have pulled out in the past to work on this thing in this bag here. And um, right now I'm working with this one, which is some Moonstone Dye Works on my Stellina sock base. It is the chiffon colorway, and this was one of my one year anniversary Moonstone Dye Works colorways. And next I'm gonna, these are all Moonstone Dye Works. This one next I'm gonna work on is waxing. And then this one down here, I'm gonna add in a little later. This is my Halloween colorway from last year, Undead. And um, I already have a few rows of this one in there, but I like kind of repeating rows. I really like having these soft colors in my blanket. There was a time in the beginning of the blanket where I had a lot of really bright and deep colors. And if you look at tor more towards the end of it, more towards the recent parts, the palette's a little more soft. And I really like that. I kind of see this mustard and like hot peach stripe as almost the dividing point from the old style and the new style. Um, but I really love it. I love the inconsistency of it. I think it's, I mean, it just adds to the scrappiness and I really like that. Um, so I've got a bunch of stuff in here I'm excited to pull out and crochet with. Um, I was going through my office and I came across this. And you guys saw this during my office tour, I showed you it was the crochet mandala that I was making a little while ago. I'm almost done with it, but I haven't finished it yet. And this was the bag that all of my yarn was living in for that. And pretty much almost all the yarn in that was DK weight yarn. And what I've decided that I wanna do is make another granny stripe crochet blanket, but in DK weight yarn for Lucy. 
And so I've just kind of stolen this bag of scraps to start that blanket out with. It's actually got some fingering and weight yarns in here. This one is a hand spun yarn that I did. And this is pretty much a fingering to sport weight, but I don't care. I don't care about the inconsistency. These two yarns are both fingering weight, but they're really heavy fingering weight. I've tried to knit socks out of them before and the gauge was just so off for me that I ripped them out and I think I'm gonna put them in this blanket. Um, I've got this, which is some Green Mountain Spinnery New Mexico Organic. And I don't know though, maybe I should make it all super wash yarn since it's gonna be for a kid. Hmm, who knows, I'll think about that. Um, this is some yarn that I won from my old local yarn shop, which is no longer in business. It's Alchemy Yarns, and um, I've never used it. It's not really my style, so it's just been sitting in this cake for years. And so I might add that in there for some fluff. And this is some more hand spun. So I've just got some random things in here. Um, I've got more DK wet yarn in my stash that I'm going to break into. And I carry DK wet yarn in my shop, so I might dye some stuff just for the sole purpose of putting in this blanket. And um, I think that would be really fun to do something scrappy, but also something kind of color blocky with my with Moonstone Dye Works. So I'm really excited about this project. And what's really nice is I did not have to buy a new hook. I do not have that many crochet hooks. Um, but since I was already doing a DK weight project, I have this one that I bought for that project. And these are my favorite types of crochet hooks. They're tulip hooks. And you can find these on Amazon. That's where I get them. And I really want to build up a whole stash of tulip hooks. Um, because every time I need a different hook size, I always have to go on Amazon and just buy a single crochet hook. So I'd really like a whole set, but that's kind of expensive and I'm not doing that kind of craft investing right now. So, <laughs> um, but so I was lucky enough to already have this one. Otherwise I would have to dive into a small but larger than tulip stash of those old boy aluminum crochet hooks, which I cannot stand using, but I have about five of those. So this is really exciting. Um, the only thing that's going to stop me from starting this for a little while is I'm actually going to have to look at a tutorial online as to how to chain on for crochet because that's not a skill I just have in my brain. Um, I'll have to follow a tutorial like I did for this one. So as soon as I get around to that, I will get this blanket started. And yeah, I'm excited about it. I love working on this thing. I think it'll be really fun to have a heavier weight version on the go as well. And I dyed some yarn today. Do you guys want to see it? I'm going to go show you. So this is the new colorway that I dyed today. It is a tonal and it's a really deep, rich kind of honey gold color. And I'm really, really happy with it. I love how this one came out. Um, I want to do another tonal, and hopefully I can do that later this week, and that way I can get the stuff up in the shop soon. I have another kind of autumnal tonal in my mind that I want to get dyed up. So that was really fun. It's really nice to be able to dye again slowly. And I'm happy with it. It doesn't have a colorway name yet, but it will soon. Alright guys, today is the day before Halloween. The day before the day before, Dia de los Muertos. And I am excited about it, but a little bummed because I'm not going to be doing anything. I'll be handing out candy, and I'm also actually a little nervous because Lucy's bedtime is pretty early and the idea of the doorbell ringing freaks me out because <laughs> I'm a wimp when it comes to getting freaked out about stuff waking her up because uh, it is me who has to deal with it when she wakes up. Um, but it'll be fine. We'll probably sit out on the front porch and hand out candy. We don't get a lot of trick-or-treaters around here anyway. Unfortunately, I still don't have a costume, so I'm probably not going to dress up. But Lucy will. She is a skeleton. You've seen it. She's gorgeous. Um, 
yeah, so happy Halloween Eve. Tomorrow is the last day of Vlogtober. I'm so proud of myself for doing most days this month. And um, I'm, I've been having so much fun doing Vlogtober. I love it. I absolutely love doing vlog Vlogtober. Hopefully I get uh, inspired enough to do Vlogmas in December. I really want to and hope to. Um, there were definitely things, topics I wanted to cover in Vlogtober that I did not get to, but also I think I'll probably just do more vlogs randomly here and there on the YouTube channel. So I'll get to that stuff. Um, okay, until tomorrow, happy day before Halloween. Bye guys. Actually, before I go, I um, kind of wanted to give you a wall tour of all the artwork I have here. Um, I have to do it quickly though because I pick Lucy up in about a half an hour and I still really want to take out the trash and switch over some laundry. So here we go. This is a wall in the hallway of my house where we have some stuff hung up that we really like. And this here is a watercolor. It's not a print, it's an actual watercolor that Colin picked up when we were in Mexico um, two years ago, I think. Uh, we stayed in the town of, I forget, I forget what town it was. But <laughs> it's like a small fishing village turned kind of like um, surf spot, so it gets a lot of visitors. But anyway, this was in like a little janky art shop and Colin really fell in love with it, so he bought it, it's a parrot. And he really wanted to give it a nice frame. So when he came home, he went thrift store searching and found this really, really cool wooden frame. And he went to the picture framing store that we have here to find a map for it that would match the picture. And it's really funny because the guy who owns the framing shop said that his dad actually made that frame and Colin found it in a thrift store. So that was cool. This is a, what do you call it, an embroidery piece that I made for Colin for his birthday the first year that we were dating. And I learned how to embroider back when I first learned how to knit from this, sorry, 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 <laughs> from this book. And um, anyway, so I made him this. And what I did is I had some linen that I think I picked up at a thrift store back then. And I drew in pencil right on the linen, just this image that I wanted. And then I embroidered, embroidered over it from stitches that I learned from that book. And this is one of the only things I've ever embroidered. And I love it. Um, I don't know what any of these stitches are called. But I'm pretty proud of all of this stuff. And this is a frame that my uh, mom had in like a box full of frames at the house I grew up in and I stole it. And <laughs> when she came over to my house one day years ago when this was first hanging on the wall, she um, totally recognized that frame and she's like, why do I recognize that frame? And I said, it's because I stole it from you. So, yeah. This is something I found in a thrift store. It's a velvet painting. And I think it's really cool. This is a drawing that I did of a rooster. And I framed it in some random frame that I have. I like to collect frames from like thrift stores and stuff. And you know, that way I have frames when I need them. Um, but this is just a rooster that I drew. And then I, um, this is some paper that came with like a shipment of something so it was like like backing paper to something and I really liked how it looked it's got this crosshatch print on it and I thought it looked like linen so I drew a rooster on it in pencil and then I went over it with like fine sharpies and then I colored it in with crayon so <laughs> that's my rooster this is a print uh, that a friend of ours did it's a woodblock print of Flat and Scruggs, who is a bluegrass duo from the 1950s. 
This is my first ever complete cross stitch. And this is a pattern from Subversive Cross Stitch, which I'm a huge fan of. And I really love this cross stitch. Again, this is a like thrift store frame. It's not, it's just, there's no glass or anything. It's just the fabric. And this is Ada fabric. I've never cross stitched onto linen before, but I would really like to. Um, I've used the Ada fabric because it has really obvious big squares and holes like the weave is really big so it makes it really easy to know where your stitches go and um i love this piece so much this is my life's motto love it this is a painting done by a local artist to me named amy um I can't remember her last name. Anyway, Amy is a friend of mine. <laughs> She's my um, my old boss's partner. And Amy is my very favorite local artist. There's a lot of local artists where I live. It's really, um, what do you call it? Per capita, we have a really heavily saturated community with artists. And she's my favorite. She does nature paintings on, well, she does paintings of animals pretty much on pieces of wood. And her stuff is beautiful, and I think it's so weird. I can't remember her last name right now, but maybe I'll put it on the screen. I don't know if she has an online presence, actually. But when we got married, uh, my old boss, who's my friend now, she asked what I wanted, and I told her that all I want ever, anything from her, is an Amy painting. And so <laughs> her paintings sell for a whole lot of money, though. So um, she gave me this, like... I don't know what you would call it. It's like a swatch for painters, right? It's like a little practice painting. So I cherish it and I adore it and it hangs on my wall. This is... This is a print of some grass. And it's really cool. It's very 70s. It's a gradient. It goes from blue to white to like greenish blue. And it's the print is like this mustard yellow. And it's just of some grass, and I really love it. It's, it came from a local plant sale put on by the Native Plant Society here in Humboldt County. And it was just like in kind of a random like junk box at one of their sales, and I fell in love with it, so I bought it. And that's it. That's our picture wall in our hallway. And I think it's great. Let me just show you some other things we have got up here. This, oh, here we go. I'll show you this. This is a, I'm not sure if it's a painting or a drawing. It's a piece of art called The Part-Timer, done by a friend, a very good friend of Colin's named Dusty. I don't know his last name either. <laughs> and I, I doubt he sells anything, like, online. Um, but... It's it's interesting. I love it. it it's supposed to, at least to me, it captures the um, feelings and emotions behind that living that type of lifestyle where your job is one of those part-time kind of get by paycheck to paycheck jobs, you know, like fast food kind of jobs. And that's what he was going for. And I think it's really cool. And over here, we've got another thrift store piece that I've had since my early 20s. And it is a cross... Actually, it's not a cross... I don't know what it is, but it's of lemons. Check it out. I don't exactly know what kind of craft that is. But I love it. And... Okay, that's it. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go switch over some laundry and take out the trash really, really quick. Okay, bye guys!